Alright, I guess we'll do a second edition of the Professor Lewin radar experiment and uh, provide analysis and such. So this might go on a bit because I think I'll go into some generic subjects but on the subject. Uh, but the Hoffa Day has made a response video and it's just more of his exaggeration of what he's doing, correcting something or explaining something. He doesn't, doesn't do any of that in these videos. He just rags. So let's understand uh, these last four or five videos he's done. He did one kitty science. Let's go back to that. That one was a real brilliant piece of garbage. So yeah, big ideas with little kids. So we post this video where we watch a teacher explain exactly backwards how light gets um, scattered. And he basically says uh, red light's like a Mack truck and blue light is like a little Volkswagen. Um, which is the opposite of what, generally speaking, they argue, is that blue light has this powerful momentum and red light is the weak light and all that kind of crap. Or obviously, by my theory, <laughs> the two lights are exactly the same in terms of energy. It just matters on density of the energy. Um, okay, and the susceptibility that electrons have to certain momentums. Anyway, then he went on this, this one, um, well, this was just completely, uh, it, as bad as, this, as the icon reveals, it's just, just a nothing explanation of focal lengths regarding uh, gravitational lensing and just more excuse making for why the, the glaring evidence of the, the consequences of gra gravitational lensing being true, that is, light being deflected by gravity, um, that it doesn't exist. All the consequences of that being true don't exist in space. They just have a few isolated instances where it fits the evidence and they have a ton of instances where it doesn't fit the theory. So they focus on the ones where, see look, it verifies our theory and they don't focus on all the places where the theory it doesn't match and there's no explanation for the non-match. And then they just invent things like dark matter which is an invisible man, god of the gaps, made up completely made up theory <laughs> of, you know, the perfect solution. You can't detect it, you can't see it, but we know it's there. And that's okay with him. Then he, he makes this video where he just says an idiotic thing like, well, this other image is obviously a superposition of two images, even though it's dated with a date on it. So they superimpose two different images from two different dates and then just put a date on it for no good reason, a wrong date. No, a, a th silly theory, a silly explanation, a silly counter-argument. All right, so that's the history of this buffoon who sits there and begins this video where he's going to correct somebody again with this whole diatribe for the first two minutes about how I'm wrong and my theory's wrong and how, uh, you know, well, I'll play some of it. Um, just crap. Just goes on a, a, a crap litany for no good reason in his preface. Allude to the fact that it's draft science that you can't figure something out. And so on and so forth. But the, the problem has always been that there is a model, although it might not be an um, explan explanatory model. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> it's just, well, the, 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 before that was more with more of this bullshit where he just talks about my problems when the problem is with your weak responses. You're claiming the authority to tell people, no, well, we've got the answer, we've got the right answer. And every time they point out where your answer doesn't fit the evidence, or you've or there's a catch, or there's a you've you've you know engineered uh, uh, the the answer. Um, you sit there and claim, no, no, it's my problem somehow. It's my problem that Professor Lewin can't do an honest radar experiment. Somehow that's my problem. No, it's not my problem. It's his problem. It's your science's problem. That it does seems like they always have to engineer um, their experiments to match their their conclusions. It, there's nothing at all honest about it. Now we'll play a little more. Um, I mean clearly their theory of explanation doesn't explain how the phenomenon happens. So again let's understand that. They're just saying well this is what we we have as a conclusion based on the fact that there's some mysterious event that takes place and so it's it's open to ex mysterious events taking place but it has nothing to do with actually explaining how it physically happens as I'm going to go into because it's sort of important because what these people are arguing is an ether theory. They keep running away from saying it 
but that's what they're arguing. They believe there's an ether, a medium, that light uh, and other electromagnetic radiation is traveling through. And it's a special medium in the sense that, of course, it doesn't obey the rules of regular mediums. It only obeys some of them. <sighs> what about this? What about that? And, and there's been objection to the need to explain everything and Einstein was held to these standards. Well, <clears throat> Einstein wasn't held to any standards. That's the whole joke of this thing. There's no explanation of a mechanism. We'll just sit there and make a dark matter solution. We'll create an invisible space thingy that does all this magical stuff. So instead of explaining the physics, we'll just say, to hell with doing physics. Let's just do magic solutions. Magic mediums that take care of it for us, that do all of the work. So it's not a deterministic universe by your people's definition because there's a whole medium underlying everything that who knows how that mechanism works because none of it has any kind of cause and effect rules. It can do whatever it wants. It's some kind of wacky medium that we can't see. How do you know how reliable it is or dependable it is? You don't know any of that because you don't have a mechanism. Einstein and quantum mechanics have been held to these standards. Well, again, they haven't. It's bullshit, and you're just proving it by this evasion of a video, this, this pretense that you somehow made an argument when you made no argument at all. And for him. And he says it's lies, and this, this would be the easiest way to uh, rebuff physics by setting up this for yourself. Because in Mendham is right to say that if we set up uh, to radar signals, or to ultrasonic sensors, I would suggest, or even if you were prepared to do it out, outdoors with, you know, 100 meters, square meters to play around with, um, shortwave radio, okay, uh, you could use shortwave radio, you could use ultrasound sensors available, probably. Yeah, yeah well, the, the point is, is why did Professor Lewin do it this way? And the, the point is, is it totally unnecessary. So, so, you know, there's so many easy ways to create a, a mechanism that says, yes, here's the, the radar showing up. Here's no radar. Here's radar. Here's no radar. So easy. And I'm saying the reason why he did it is because this is the, way, the only way it works. This is the only way you can make it match their theory. Cheaply these days, some originally used to be quite expensive. Yeah, well, ultrasonic sensors actually used to be really cheap, to tell you the truth, because I worked with them uh, 25 years ago. Um, and they're more expensive now. We shall uh, find out. Uh, I don't believe they use a, a, a carrying sound. That's right. They don't. They they they, they use a, a a frequency because all they're doing is vibrating a piece of quartz. Okay, so that and a radar is doing the same thing. It's vibrating a piece of crap, and so it uses a frequency to vibrate it. Unlike when we turn on an LED or something. Um, as far as I know. Um, we're not creating a frequency to get the light out. We're using some other mechanism that stimulates the, the conversion of the electricity into photons. So it doesn't, it's not dependent on us creating the nanometer frequency or vibration to cause the photon to be created. But I don't know, that might be built into the silicon itself, so I'm not sure. And on the uh, ultrasonic sensors, um, oh, maybe, maybe this ultrasonic. Uh, ultrasound. I don't know. Uh, that would be interesting. I forgot about that. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was only like 40,000 hertz or something, and you could get the thing to work. Anyhow, if radar is an electromagnetic wave, which it seems to be, um, Danny Mendham has his proof. He's, he has the ultimate. And I'll explain why he ought to doubt. And, you know, I would back $5,000 quite easily that he's wrong on this. That well, okay. Well, maybe, there, maybe that's somewhere to go. You know, this, this, we can actually do something dramatic for a change because maybe it's worth betting on. <laughs> but anyway, um, so again, it's all this promise that you're somehow going to provide this proof that it's somehow obvious that, yes, it makes, makes perfectly good sense that if I take two flashlights and I put them in parallel to each other, that the beam in between them, you know, just make them a little bit of a little tiny separation, that the beam right in between them is going to be four times brighter. See? Now that makes perfect sense to me, right? I mean, that's just so logical that, of course, there'll be four times as much light right here than any one of the flashlights. That is, there'll be four flashlights worth of light right here. Yeah, that makes perfectly good sense. Sure it does. Uh, what he was right about 
is that instead of a sound being on the carrier wave and rigging it up to to go beep beep beep, you know, uh, he could you could rig up the electronics simply to detect the carrier wave, yeah, and switch on and switch off. Yeah, well, if you're doing an experiment to demonstrate something, then I guess you should do it to be as as fair to to the the purpose of the experiment as possible. And you know, he he well, I'll show. He's he's got he's he's not doesn't even do amplitude modulation correctly. I mean, you could go to the Wikipedia site. It does have some decent graphics. This is amplitude modulation. Okay, this is what he did to the radar signal. The radar signal is the blue signal. Okay, so understand, he took the radar signal and made it go high and then to zero, and then high and then to zero. So he's essentially turning off the radar every 100 hertz, so a thousand times a second, right? Um, he's turning the radar off and then doing the experiment that way. So it's on, then they're off, then it's on, then it's off, then it's on, then it's off. So instead of just having a nice straight beam of straight even radar. And then what kind of carrier signal did he use? Did he use like somebody talking so this red line would be all kinds of weird shapes? No, he used a tone. So it's always going to be the same. So that when you get it out of phase, all right, that the phase shift, you won't hear anything. When it's perfectly out of phase, you know, perfectly um, 180 degrees difference, you won't hear any sound because the two sound waves are exactly the same, right? Because it's a tone. But if he had used uh, a speaking voice or some other some other kind of sound, then his the whole thing wouldn't have happened either because then you couldn't have had the silent part. So you know, there's two circumstances there that are easily easily corrupt the purpose of the experiment. If I was doing a light experiment, would it make any sense to say, well, let's take flashlights and turn them on and off really fast to do the experiment to test whether there's light interference? No, that would just make a mess out of the experiment, wouldn't it? Yes, that's what it would do. It would just disguise the true results. And, you know, that's the bullshit here. And he calls me the unreliable, undependable person when he's the one defending this crap. And it's crap. Clicked on the wrong video here. <sighs> Disgusting, whatever he is. Uh, good morning. Oh, good, good morning. morning. This is stupid cunt. <laughs> yes, uh, the stupid cowboy guy. Uh, what video is this? Why do these keep popping up? Oh, this is an advertisement, so we don't need this. All right, it's not playing anything so you can skip the ad I'm not gonna I don't, I don't I didn't ask you to even play an ad thank you that's the actual next professor own video at, um, so you know switched um, in what we call a resonance state with an aerial um, we can, and, and as, as the power we can actually create electromagnetic waves um, so something goes into this slop where he's talking stuff that doesn't have anything to do with what was argued in my video at all. It doesn't need to have any, we don't need any background on how a, mag a magnetic wave, electromagnetic wave, whatever that means, is created. But yeah, if you got into the background, well then you'd have to explain that in, in creating amplitude modulation, it's not as simple as, you know, you just sit there and turn on the amplitude modulation switch. Because now what you're doing is moving electrons. You're creating an electric current, and you're using another force to do that. Um, and so it's really quite, you know, there's, there's, it's more complicated. And so the thing we have to, the thing that has to be explained is the the phenomena that's the most glaring in in his experiment is when he covers one of the radar producers. So let's let's just real quick just draw the the scenario. See, and Hathaway's talking as if it doesn't matter. See, we've gotten rid of the need to have any slits that we can just put um, producers of a signal close together and we could create interference. As long as they're in phase, anything will do. You don't need slits anymore. You don't need any kind of Huygens. You don't need any of that stuff anymore. You just take two in phase things, put them next to each other, and they'll interfere with each other. That's his theory. Alright, so the, <coughs> the idea is 
is that we're two emitters of the radar and there's one receiver of the radar. And um, so these two signals are supposed to be coming out in this on-off kind of manner. And it's an on-off of an on-off, if you get what I'm saying, right? Let's go back to this, the Wikipedia page. <coughs> it's taking a signal that's going to be on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. And it's taking that signal and turning it on and off, on and off, on and off, and on and off. So it's taking something that's going on and off, say, this, this, is, this isn't the same amount of difference. I mean, obviously a 100... A 1,000 kilohertz signal and a 10 gigahertz signal, it's a huge difference. So there'd be like a million of these little jiggers inside of the audio signal. So there's a million little on-offs inside of this really slow on-off, 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 on-off. So now there's two on-offs, two, two switch switchings happening to the signal. which might be the four thing, right? Two times two equals four. <laughs> you know, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, so as I was saying, the thing that's a little tricky to explain is why these two waves, all right? So when I cover, so the, and then they're received by the one, the, the, this thing is in the center of this center line. It didn't draw it very well, but this is in the center. So, the argument is is that if you cover one of these radar producers and you get one quarter the amount of signal. So somehow having two of them on gives you four times the amount of radar getting to the receiver. Now, just intuitively, that doesn't make any sense at all, right? Now in two slit phenomenon, we know that if you have these two slits and you shine light through them, right? So there's two openings we shine light. Well, we know this center thing is very bright, four times brighter, maybe more. Uh, but we know that's, we sort of know that's happening, most people, because they figure, well, the percentage of the light that gets reflected to these other locations, you know, interfered with, okay, is only a percentage of the light and a good amount of the light just goes straight through. So the center one is four times brighter, or much brighter, because um, there's a whole bunch of photons that go through without getting interfered with. And they'll go right to the centerpiece. But, again, those numbers are even more than four times, so that can't be the explanation. Um, and the other thing noticed in Professor Lewin's um, demonstration was when he went to this other, these other locations where we're supposed to detect the interference, the signal here was almost as loud as the center signal. So it was a four times again, a 4x signal somehow. So four, somehow the signal's four times louder. Now, you could believe there's four times more radar, or you could believe, no, the audio is four times louder when you have two sources. Not the actual carrier frequency, but the interpretation of the audio part. Okay, so this audio part is as you increase the amplitude of this signal, okay, you double the amplitude of this signal, that there's some feature in that, when you do that, that causes a four time effect. And my argument would be it has to do with the velocity of the electrons that you're creating with the bigger signal. They have to go, you have to sort of see this curve as a change in direction. So every time there's a change in direction, that means the, the signal, um, I can't, don't have anything, I can't draw on the screen. Um, the the so so you think of it as when it's going up it, it has to speed up and then slow down to a stop because it has to change directions so they're all changes in direction and so as you increase the amplitude or the 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 height of something it has to do all of that in the same amount of time and to do it in the same amount of time would require that these electrons have to move four times faster 
because of the fact that they have to speed up, then slow down, then speed up, then slow down, and they have to go a much bigger distance. So they have to go four times faster, technically. Their peak velocity has to be four times faster to accomplish the, the same task in the same amount of time. But anyway, I won't go don't really want to get into all that, but that, in my opinion, would be a reasonable explanation. But back to Huthley's unreasonable nothing as an answer. All right, so we'll jump ahead a little bit more. Roll and fold by. That's sine waves of different amplitudes. So he's just showing sine all this stuff. So totally useless. I've got sine of x, sine of 2x, sine of 4x, just plotted over um, 2. Uh, just explains nothing uh, absolutely useless nothing showing just showing different frequencies on top of each other doesn't explain any of this where the the argument is supposed that these two radar sources are perfectly in phase so there's no argument about any cross signaling um, but even if it was like I said even if they were out of phase you would argue that some percentage of them will accidentally be in phase and so you would still get some more more radar than just two times here because some percentage would be in phase and therefore multiplying by four. So again, they could just make super radar this way, right? I mean, if you want to make super penetrating radar, you just take two sources and you create four times as much radar and then you take those two sources and create four times more radar again and you take those two sources make four times more and you're up to 16 times radar penetration. So why wouldn't they use this to their advantage, this special, I can make four times as much as something for free? A radar 100 gigahertz frequency through an earth. Okay, it's not 100 gigahertz, it's 10 gigahertz. So, I mean, that was right in Professor Lewin's video, so you didn't get the details correct. Very well. But, so he sends a... Uh, so, yes, so his drawing does not match what is actually taking place. He's got the wrong signal. It's the carrier signal. So he's, he's done, you know, frequency modulation or whatever he, instead of amplitude modulation. So jump ahead a little further. Just more, see, this. This is not, obviously, this is not, it's similar, okay? It's got a similar kind of jaggedness to, well, the jaggedness doesn't really fit. I, I mean, it really just doesn't fit. So he's claiming he's correcting me, and he's correcting me with a wrong. Um, this is what this is what Professor Lewin did. This is amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation. <sighs> All right. So continuing. Mostly used before. The separate system of radio. I, I mean, I, population, which is I suppose this would be okay if the carrier signal was only one, two, three, four times the frequency of the the signal you're sending. But we're talking about a, a million times, right? We're, we're saying the, the 10 gigahertz is something like a million times. So there'd, there'd be a million little jiggles here. So the, obviously the little jiggles in the signal would be, be almost imperceptible, the radar, the actual radar um, indications of on-off would be almost imperceptible on the curve. So, so it wouldn't affect the sound curve at all, where obviously this would make for a kind of an ugly tone. You know, it would have bumps in it that would be kind of obvious because the carrier isn't high enough frequency. So this is the correct drawing if you if you at least get rid of this at least edge then you're getting somewhere that was a bit more expensive and complicated i think back in the day so most radio signals 30 40 years ago people listen to am channels so this is all part of the irrelevancy too it's not even true um <laughs> so whatever uh, you know, the, the, the competition over the valuable bandwidth, um, that was a whole other issue of whether you give it away for free. Redolved, negatively doped, germanium with, 
So, so, right, so now he's going on to how transistors are made, which, again, isn't really part of this video, but it's, you know, it's part of the electronics, because certainly the electronics are part of the explanation of how the sound is going to be um, peeled off of the radar signal. And let's understand the radar signal. Let's just show it one more. They're, they're basically taking the radar. Okay, you have to, you have to send a frequency on the to to the little the little dish of quartz to make it vibrate so it vibrates to create the radar and instead of having this if you did the experiment right then you'd have a nice straight line here of the blue going nice and straight all right and instead if this is basically is saying turn the radar off, off here turn the radar off, off radar off turn the radar off so it's basically just taking a switch and turning it on and off turning the radar on and off with the sound tone. And how is that going to be, how is that not destructive when you're seeking to find interference in the radar signal? When you're interfering with your own signal. You're interfering with the radar signal and you're supposed to be using this to detect interference. You get it? If you're turning it on and off, you're creating interference in the signal. Why create unnecessary interference in the signal if you're doing an experiment to demonstrate interference created by the, the environment? You get how this is just totally not a harmless thing to do? It's totally harmful to the purpose of the experiment to put interference into the radar signal when you're trying to show how the radar signal is getting interfered with by the environment. Whether he can actually design can circuits. Yeah, well I did do it. So you can say whether I actually can. I didn't say I was the greatest professional um, electronics guy on earth or any of that stuff. I just did, I did design circuits and I did solder a ton of boards and I knew what the parts did and you know I knew how to get electrocuted by them and I did. Idiot. So this is what the radar signal should have looked like, right? So if you just sent plain radar that's what it would have looked like. If you didn't put the sound tone on it the radar signal would have been this nice smooth signal and then you could sit there and detect when it gets interfered with. Get it? Signal here in um, 60 hertz, I believe the Americans are on there, or 50 hertz. <clears throat> right, so he contemplated doing a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with what I'm contending, which is a specific video by Professor Lewin making specific claims about the four times stronger radar signal, about how the radar signal, we don't need two slits, we just have two sources here, we don't need any Huygens, we don't need nothing. We, there's still interference. Radar pointed at radar will create interference. Light pointed at light won't create any interference. I can't make two laser beams interfere with each other to save my fucking life. But if I point two radar signals at each other, they'll interfere with the fuck with each other. All over the place. Bounce all over the place. Uh, uh, a really explicit version of, of, of a radar signal. But it's, it's all See, now this would have been correct here. This is the one he just glosses over. This one is the correct dis description, except for this little bit here, because that's over-modulated. So they'd have to get rid of that's That's an example of over-modulating. That means you, you, you go beyond and you start creating the negative signal in the middle. So you end up creating another signal in the middle when you over-modulate. All the same. All the same. Really, just contemplating. So he's saying that it's all the same. When it's, it's nothing like all the same. It's completely different. That's why they call it FM and AM. Is because it's completely different. You just, oh yeah, it's all the same. No, it's not all the same. Very different. FM, you wouldn't have turned the radar off. Okay, completely off to create your, your signal. You would have left the radar on the whole time with at least FM. So there would have always been radar on. And your signal would have been on top of the always onness of the radar and all you would do is change the band of the radar a little bit the frequency of the radar a little bit um, but see they can't use that because if they use that then they'd have by their own theory interference because they would be out of phase all the time um, well technically well it shouldn't be because it's actually the same signal a low frequency signal you um you get the picture? Yeah. 
So I didn't play this part, so we'll play this. I have this sped up, I think. Yeah, I do. He's still horribly slow. So this is a picture of something that's supposed to mean something. He's typing in this little bullshit. So when we combine those signals... Still, so he's saying this is what it does. Again, the signals they're combining is one, 10 gigahertz versus 1,000 hertz. A huge difference in, in the frequency. Huge, gigantic, monstrous difference in the how many up and downs there are in the same inch. One of, them that ha one of them has one up and down, and the other one has a billion up and downs. You know, this kind of thing? No, it's not that kind of thing. And this is, this is a light signal. This is a radio wave going out. A light signal going out over the air at the speed of light. Yes, it's all light. They're all photons. So let's understand that. We're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and your people's theory that there's this medium out there that this stuff waves through. And my opposition to that saying, no, it's fine. You do your sound wave interference thing. Yes, that happens because it's a medium, the atmosphere. You do your water wave interference thing. Yes, that happens because it's a medium. Okay, but electromagnetic medium... You haven't demonstrated its existence, and it doesn't work the same way. It's only in specific little tiny circumstances that you can make it look the same. And by engineering your experiment. And this was clearly an engineered experiment to demonstrate uh, a, a, a consequence that is disguised in the, the rig. As he said, we rig this up this way. They did it that way because that's the only way they can make it work. They couldn't make the experiment work if they did it right. And you can demonstrate interference as a phenomenon with other kinds of waves, with light waves, other than the two slit. Yes, other than the two slit. Well, again, in, other than the two slit are what? Some other circumstance where you're going to subject the photons to diffraction of some kind. Some material interferer, some material thing. Because you're not going to get it to happen light on light. Light does not interact with light. So go ahead and show me the experiment where you use light and you have light bounce off of light. Go ahead and show me that. Show me where you're not using a medium. Okay? Matter is a medium. Two slits are a medium. All those things are mediums you're putting in the way of the photons. But of course this, this crashes and kills the Mendham's entire theory so okay so again another preposterous overstatement it it kills your entire theory okay it doesn't harm mine any to say light's different i don't believe light is different than magnetism and i don't think it's i don't believe it's different than gravity but as i've pointed out it is photons at a frequency so if there is some rule of the universe that photons at a frequency behave different than photons polarized or photons not polarized and not at a frequency, and there's a special rule for these special light photons that they do special things, uh, I'll concede there's a, there's a special rule. I'm just saying there's no evidence of the special rule, and all your evidence is chicanery, your fake uh, gravitational wave nonsense, um, you know, uh, your, your, you know, uh, Einstein's medium, uh, where you convert matter into, into waves in, in bent space, and then you got gravitational lensing, so what do you have to show that? You have a bunch of preposterously insane optical configurations that don't make any logical sense or mathematical sense. You can't find enough gravity to make the bending, plus, if you did, they have consequences, and you don't account for the fact that all the consequences are not at all counted for. I mean, you're just so full of shit to say my theory's in jeopardy. I've pointed out how your theory is in jeopardy. You cannot, you know, work with it. I can work with it. Again, I just, just stated, why, how, does, how does making a special rule, as you're claiming, for one force. So all the other forces, magnetism, the atomic forces, um, and gravity, they don't do any of this combining thing, okay? 
they do the superposition thing, which means their forces that go right through each other, and until a piece of matter shows up to do the to, to do the calculating, there is no calculating. The force doesn't interfere with the force. The light beam doesn't interfere with another light beam unless there's a material thing in there to interpret the two sources of force. So without an interpreter, there's no interference. The results are the results. The results are the results. So there you go. I mean, you can't get more vacuous, right? I mean, I'm saying the results are in engineered because he did the experiment uh, in a rigged manner. And you're just pretending the, the rig is the rig. It's the way we do the experiment. It's the results. You have to accept them. It proves his, he proved it. He said that actually in here. He did, you know, I didn't get to it, but he actually said words almost to those effect. He proved it with the experiment. Yeah, by, by doing the experiment in a manner completely corrosive to the thing you're attempting to detect. By obscuring the thing you're trying to detect, he did the good experiment that proves something. The, um, I watched a, a YouTube about, on the PBS channel, about the theory that some fundamental constants in, in um, the standard model theory, some people hypothesized that they've changed over time. And some people went out and have, have measured and shown that they've changed over time. But other people have been out and essentially shown that they're the same, repeated, more accurate. Yeah, well, whatever. Same yeah. Experiment uh, who, who, who cares? Who cares? And what does this have to do with anything? So now you're going to bring up some other obscure experiment but for which isn't on the dissection table, for which I'm going to claim, no doubt, if they have an experiment that demonstrates anything interesting, no doubt it's an experiment that has 17 different wacky boxes, little magic boxes, where they, uh, they tell me what they assume the little magic box is doing in the experiment. So I'm sure it's full of shit. Just like your entanglement experiments are full of shit. Change the other way over time, so it's not. So it's like it's dependent on the region in space. They look somewhere else. And other people have been out and experimented and shown that in fact it doesn't change over time. So science isn't so corrupt that people don't go and check. Oh, oh whatever that even means. Go and check again with what? There, there are flawed measuring devices that they over overestimate the the capacity of the device to perform the task. For example, the two slit, something that simple. Uh, again, let's, I'll point out again, Young's experiment was completely meaningless in the in the history of physics, in a sense. It has the the, the fact that a single slit creates the same pattern was the news story. Okay, the, the, there isn't any news story. Okay, about the two, you know, it's like the frog who robbed the bank. That's the story. The frog with his wife who robbed the bank, that's not a story. The, the, the frog robbing the bank, that's the story. Newton's rings is the story. Explain that. Then you've accomplished something. Young's experiment was nothing. Yet physics thought it was something. It just proves how... They didn't even know their own physics. These arrogant, frankly, I'm going to say assholes. Because yes, this this inveneration, this putting uh, Young's experiment on a pedestal as if it was remarkable in some way, just shows physics. Just shows how modern physics, because that happened in 18 or whatever it was, um, was just susceptible to just jumping at anything. Feet, you know, show them anything, and they'll see a hobgoblin other people's results they both um it, the way it seems to be working these days is, is you know uh, the checkers they all get the nobel prize these days you know the two teams on at the CERN laboratory jointly got and everybody on those because one did an experiment detected the exposure and so did the other so the confirmation all the teams got the nobel prize um are named on it i mean they only give three guys the prediction of the higgs went to um Higgs and right, well, who cares? Again, and this, and this is just another. This is who he thinks the Higgs boson is good physics. So this is something we should we all talk about. How this is this just demonstrates how great physics works when it's another one of these completely obtuse, you know, completely buried under all kinds of garbage standard model mathematical bullshit. And all we're really talking about is some tracing. 
of some kind where they say we didn't really see the actual Higgs we saw its great-grandchild and you know and its great-grandchild could only exist in that configuration if the grandfather or the great-grandfather did exist so I mean some kind of bullshit like that and he calls that this is what's that really is great physics now that's suck and physics enough, this is given the different names we call this diffraction it's exactly the same physics <laughs> that's funny that that comes up now just because yes so it's just part of the more the canard somehow when it's a single slit let's call it something different and as he points out yes you can't call it something different because exactly the same thing is happening so it's just all more part of the canards of science the other guys uh, the names on the papers submitted was with all the guys. I, I just, uh, I can't know. believe he's doing this. All right, so he makes a 24 minute video about 1.3 minutes of the video was on the subject. You probably got an experimental Nobel Prize for the lot of them. I don't know. But the point is that, that we have real legitimate checks and it's a completely different principal machine, the, the CMS detector and the other one. And it was like when, when those scientists announced faster than the speed of light neutrinos. Yeah, they did all the check-in themselves, and in the end, somebody went out there and found the problem for them. Um, and if, even if they'd not found the problem, other people would have designed experiments to double-check it. Yeah, even if they couldn't find that, the loose wire, so to speak, uh, as it turned out. Science is not so corrupt. It's, it's, it's oh, come on. <laughs> you know, it just, no, it's just this blanket endorsement. Don't worry. No, the presidents don't lie. The Congress isn't full of shysters. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, just, just, just trite in defense of um, something that was wrong-headed a hundred years ago, pointed in the wrong direction. It's built a bunch of rickety fake bridges to nowhere. Um, and so instead of just conceding that it's been a sloppy history um, and there's all kinds of reasons to suspect it's got fundamentally things wrong um, Huygens, Heisenberg, blah, dark matter again you can just go down the list of all the bent space as an explanation what rubbish Corrupt in, in um, the vagueness and the selling of books and refusing to bring philosophical ideas when you know in the full complexities of this and, but, but in part that's, that's understandable yeah, it's understandable, and they don't have an explanation for any of this stuff as a force. Like I said, they don't explain magnetism. I do. <laughs> you know, they don't give you a clue on what, uh, how magnetic uh, uh, radiation is produced. Well, every every major physicist, you know, every major talking head understands that these are ma mathematical models, and that, you know, if you push them, they'd say, well, yeah, no. You have to accept people's when working within. So, again, all of this mush. I was talking about an actual physical experiment uh, describing how, uh, you know, the way it was done is deceptive and how fundamentally the conclusions being drawn or the inferences being made about what people should conclude were um, fundamentally wrong. And it was wrong to imply that. Again, to imply that there's four times more radar being produced by two sources than one source is fundamentally wrong. From the model of fields, all of this follows that's true. Well, it's true if you, if you don't accept fields uh, as, as um, something to stand on, then, yeah, you're taking away the thing to stand on. We think it's a good thing to stand on, but only as far as they're useful in the model. Okay, ether. So again, you just, just don't quit playing a game like your, your field is something other than ether. See, I use the word field to describe a whole bunch of something. But it's a something. So you're now trying to take the, the good word of field, which actually describes things that are actual things in a field. Field of corn. There's actual corn in the field. We're using the word field just to say, well, we're just doing that as another way of saying bent space or ether. Okay, so we're just going to steal the word field now and turn it into our word where it means, no, the, the magical thing, the water, the invisible water that the light travels through, waves through. It makes good predictions and whatnot. Uh, again, bullshit on this whole predicting anything. They, 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 all, they all understand this. And it, it's, to be, it's to be babyish not to, to understand that they're, they're not... Uh, uh, well, I'd say it's in, retarded. So you, you go ahead and call me a baby, but you're a fucking retard. 
to fall for this crap and to sit there and play this game like you're somehow a defender of it and you've somehow provided a rational explanation that somewhere in this fucking video you did a correction or somewhere in this video you explained amplitude modulation. You sure as fuck didn't do that very well at all. So, you know, and, this, and the fact that you put this crap on my, on my channel saying, you are so wrong, I'll make a video. Well, if this is the fucking video, how, you didn't demonstrate how I'm wrong about anything at all here. This is a pile of crap. There's nothing here to even argue it's such a piece of crap. 24 minutes of crap about fucking CERN. Deliberately lying. They're just choosing their emphasis. Oh, again, the, the, the lie I'm talking about here, the, 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 the rig was quite obvious and quite specific. Why was this audio signal carried on the radar? Why, when you're doing an experiment to demonstrate the interference, interference with a radar signal, why would you create an interfered signal? Why would you interfere with the signal you're going to use your, 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 your test instrument? Why would you bend your test instrument to do the test? How, how can you possibly do a reliable test if you're bending your test instrument? You're bending the ruler and then you're going to go measure something. I mean, that's the simple accusation. Make a counter-argument to that accusation. The real accusation I made. Jeez, this is pathetic. And choosing the metaphors to explain the facets that they think are uh, most important. Well, again, that's not the argument. The argument is you're, you can't use this experiment as a demonstration of something when you have corrupted its ability to do the demonstration. By turning the radar on and off, you're creating the opportunity for there to be places where the two signals are both off, where, where the signal coming for both is in the off position at certain locations. Yes, that'll happen when you have the radar off on. So, so you turn the radar off here, right? And, and on and off. So there's places where it's going to be received as off because the phase is going to change at each one of these locations. The wave will be at a different place. That is the wave of there's 1,000 photons, 1,000 photons, 1,000 photons, 1,000 photons, zero photons in between, zero, zero. And so the, the place getting hit by the zero and the place getting hit by the 1,000 will change as you move across this field. Well, of course that's going to happen because you're, you're turning the radar on and off. Duh. If they left the radar on, then that couldn't happen. So clearly putting the sound wave on top of the radar signal, essentially turning the radar on and off, 1,000 times a second, certainly didn't do the experiment any, didn't, didn't point out how you're not going to be creating interference in the sense the illusion of interference because you're turning the signal on and off. All right, so finishing up. What I really want to do is just a video on the generality of, and I sort of mentioned it already, so I just, I'll just reemphasize it. So let's understand. We have these, these you know, water experiments and we have sound experiments. And both of those things, you can understand interference because you can understand the medium has tension in it. So the rope experiment with, you know, where you whip the rope, uh, you know, and you, you, you go fast and you, for a short distance and you create this wave that will travel through the rope. Um, that's those are waves. Those are examples of waves. Waves are happen in a medium. So they're claiming that photons, the electromagnetic spectrum, Okay, unlike magnetism, unlike the nuclear forces, unlike gravity, well, they're sort of saying gravity waves, right? It is kind of a little bit spooky that way. Um, but anyway, what's the medium? What, what's, so, so they're claiming there is a medium, that somehow these waves travel through this medium, and they, they behave just like sound waves, except the problem is, is that when they hit a point, okay, the entire wave collapses to that point. So instead of this wave going its way and this wave going its way and all these different little bits of the wave going its separate way, they're claiming with this special electromagnetic ether that what happens is all the energy in the entire wave, okay, all the energy goes to this one location. Whatever spot hits, 
all the energy from that entire wave somehow goes into that spot. You know, some magical way it turns into a ton of energy. Um, a, a, a wave ton. <laughs> or uh, whatever. Uh, you know. And so there's no explanation well how, how, you know, you have these similar... Um, it, 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 like I said, it, it displays a tiny amount of similarity. And let's understand that the only time light displays any similarity is when you're affecting it by a medium, when you put it through a, a, a piece of film, or you put it through a piece of glass, or you put it through uh, slits, you know, or you put it through some other thing where matter is involved. Then you get this effect. So when you impose a medium, you can create uh, a, a transfer, um, you can convert um, your, your waves into tons, or your tons into waves, <laughs> however you want to look at it. But that's essentially what you're doing, right? You're just taking the, you're taking the thing that's a little independent photon, and you're forcing it to go through a medium that's going to vibrate or do something else. I don't even know, it's, you know, it's somehow going to absorb, um, be affected by, and then readmit the energy in another form. But that's the big claim here. So let's just understand, their claim is, is there's an ether, and that the ether doesn't behave like air, it doesn't, like an atmosphere, it doesn't behave like water in any other respect, except this one interference respect. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no similarity between waves and, um, uh, the particle fact <coughs> of what happens when electromagnetic radiation hits a location. Just like, you know, little bits being shot off, and it's very much like little bits being shot off. And the only difference, like, say something like these, these radar waves. The only, the only way they're more like waves is because they're all, there's a, a whole bunch of them sent at exactly the same time. And so that's the only way they're in any way like a wave. There's a whole bunch of them in one timing cycle. So you send a bunch, then you send nothing, you send a bunch, you send nothing, you send a bunch, you send nothing. But that's the only way they duplicate the appearance of a wave. They're not as the individual tons, they're doing exactly what you think about when you think of a light bulb. They're doing exactly that. They're just going in a straight line from that location. Straight line, straight line, straight line, as little individual tons. And they're not doing any collective. We're a collection. We're bound together. We have tension built between the photons. So the photons are tied together in their theory. Somehow the photons are connected to each other like water molecules or like air molecules that there's tension and none of that's happening it's their theory again it's in jeopardy and i'm just exposing how their proof they use an experiment as proof of something so professor lewin did this experiment to prove something and he did the experiment in such a manner as that the proof is completely corrupted and it can be pointed to and said no you ruined the proof by turning the radar on and off by interfering with the radar signal to display interference in the environment you can't interfere with your test instrument and then claim you're testing for interference that's bullshit science enough said